Okay, so on this episode, I have Trevor, who's a lead singer and guitar player from the, the local rock band, No Surprises. He also has another project called This Is a Train Wreck. Oh. And uh, Trevor is a curator of the Hangover Fest, which was a, a benefit for the Woosley Fires. Is that, is that correct, sir? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. We, uh, we, had, we wanted to act quick for the, uh, the victims of that fire that happened, I think, two years ago. And mm -hmm. um, I, just a bunch of local friends of mine came through and we raised, I think, like $600, $700 for the, for the victims of the fire. No, Woosley, is that like uh, near uh, Malibu? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, it was all, it was that really horrible fire that decimated there. There's mm -hmm. also been another really horrible fire last year, but you know, there's fires all over the place in California, but that one hit a, hit a bunch of people that we knew. So we oh. really wanted to make sure to help them out. That's awesome, man. It's a great gesture. You know, I wish I was around to, to, to come. Um, so, so tell me about the early days of being exposed to music. Uh, did you play guitar first or are you a multi-instrumentalist or yes, what, I am. what specifically made you gravitate to making music? Was it as a young child or in middle school, high school? So in elementary school, I was at a friend's house for a birthday party. I believe it was like fifth grade or something. Mm -hmm. He had a guitar there and I picked it up played i think iron man even though i'd never heard that song before in my life and i was like yo that's some dope shit and mm. since then i've just been playing anything else i can get my hands on mostly string instruments although i do play the piano synth and drums among oh, okay. other things that is cool man so you play a bunch of different instruments so i actually just got my banjo out of a storage unit mm -hmm. so i'm excited to put that on a track next week yeah, I saw you playing ukulele on one of your posts on Instagram, and um, my kids play ukulele, and one of my kids, she plays ukulele and violin and the flute, and um, they bought me a ukulele two Christmas, Chris, Christmases ago for Christmas, but um, I play bass, and um, so I'm, I'm a tall guy, so it's kind of hard with the ukulele to, you know, do the fingering and stuff with that little thing. But uh, I get you, man. I got yeah. I got big old like Polish sausage fingers over here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So what what um artists or bands influenced the, the sound for No Surprises? Like when I was listening, I, I heard definitely like a, a Growlers influence. What what other uh, is that? A, got... Is that a three piece unit in No Surprises, or is that a? Because uh, I saw one episode of just you and the drummer so maybe you guys were just jamming or for a while it, it the history of the band is quite tumultuous oh, okay. uh there's a lot of there's a lot of different people that were in the band um in the booth it's effectively a two-piece it's me and my drummer mm -hmm. on the upcoming album we have the 51st state coming out this may uh mm -hmm. it's i play everything on the album except for the drums and of course, some of the guests on the album do stuff too. Mm. But live, um, we were operating as a two-piece for a while, but just recently we recruited two more people. So it's a four-piece, which is what it was always supposed to be. Oh, so on uh, live, it's definitely a four-piece. Yes, sir. Cool, cool. That's awesome, man. Yeah. And the band, This Is A Train Wreck, is is that, do, they, do the members of both bands kind of coincide or... Is unfortunately they don't unfortunately uh, they don't really interact too much the, mm -hmm. the the dudes from Trainwreck, um they kind of um they're off in their own world like they're they're separate projects okay but yeah. we both support each other man like mm -hmm. the train wreck boys they're they're my second family musically apart from no surprises but like that's that's a whole nother story though those guys are great you should have them on they're they're fantastic well yeah totally man um we should definitely keep in touch after this and then um because i remember you were telling me about some other bands that were like local that um i definitely want to talk to some female bands and stuff like that so oh yeah it's um, butter yeah. aerial view mm -hmm. uh the girl from the gooms is an absolute genius mm -hmm. like dude there's all sorts of groups definitely definitely you guys are like like local centralized in the valley kind of we're hoping to get less local, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but as of now, yeah, we're pretty local um, to the San Fernando Valley in Los Angeles, California. The San Fernando we, Valley. Awesome. We um we played a bunch of places 
in when we first started, we opened up a show for Agent Orange at the Whiskey A Go Go. The legendary we, punk rock band Agent Orange. Yes, I Correct. got to meet them afterwards, and I remember exactly what he said. It's a weird outfit, kid, and my life was changed <laughs> forever after that. I couldn't believe it. But yeah, we uh, we've been around for about like six, seven years now. Oh, no okay. It's probably about six years. Yeah, so it's cool you had an opportunity to play the Whiskey. What a great place. You know, I've seen a few great shows there at the Whiskey. Yeah. So were there any, like, uh, golf groups, like, from back in the day that it, that uh, influenced you, your playing or your style or any of the band's music? or? My drummer is a huge, huge goth and industrial kid. Oh, okay. He's into, like, Skinny Puppy, Skinny Puppy, My Life with a Thrill Kill Colt, Typo Negative. Uh, personally, I'm really into Nine Inch Nails um mm. which coincidentally was my first concert uh yeah i was lucky enough to see them with soundgarden before chris died oh and, damn dude um, lucky uh, yeah and also saw nine inch nails like in 93 the first uh palooza tour pretty hate machine that's so, awesome yeah so yeah, i'm a big nine inch nails fan nine inch nails fan and also ministry and skinny puppy too so I actually caught Ministry with Death Grips. I think we were talking about that a long time ago. Oh, yeah, at the uh, Palladium, exactly. The Palladium. That was a great show, dude. That was. That was monumental, yeah, for sure, yeah. So tell me a little bit about the hang the Hangover Fest. Uh, I know that what the idea was about. What, what other bands played with you guys at the Hangover Fest? Some friends of mine. Uh, there's Almost Porn. There's Fencer. Uh, the Absurd with Liberty. I was wearing their shirt earlier. Mm -hmm. They're the homies from Bakersfield. Cool. Um, let's see who else. There was this group called Bed that I didn't know too much about. Hot Brothers, which are local uh, favorites, and Crashing Under New Ties, which are my friends. And um, it was just a it was just a, a bunch of beach freaks. It was just a bunch of friends of ours that we had made throughout the scene. Mm -hmm. who um wanted to help us out and they did and of course this is a train wreck played as well mm -hmm. and it was just a really fun show uh i got to see the last performance from my friends ghoul kids that was their last show oh okay. and dude okay. they i'm they, it's a shame because they were amazing they it was a two-piece and he would play with a looping pedal but they actually played with no surprises at the worst show we've ever done <laughs> uh, and they did a cover of Sweet Transvestite from Rocky Horror Picture Show. Oh, Rocky Horror. Oh my yeah. god. It <laughs> it was spellbinding. I I miss them every day. But yeah, uh, that was Hangover Fest, man. It was fun. Yeah, so what what are your some of your favorite uh venues to play like before COVID obviously, but over the years oh, favorite uh SoCal or West Coast venues or you guys did some inter some domestic and international touring, correct? Uh, Trainwreck is going to do some international touring. Uh, mm -hmm. I've toured the most with Trainwreck, but with no surprises, my favorite venue doesn't exist anymore, unfortunately. Oh, okay. uh, it was called White Oak Music and Arts. It was this amazing place that was on the corner of White Oak and Sherman Way in the San Fernando Valley. Mm -hmm. And it had three areas where you could play. It had a big main stage it had a back room that was like a club, basically. And then they had an like, outdoor little patio area. But nice. the best show I ever did, I, I played one of the best shows and the worst shows I've ever had. The best show was in the back room for my buddy Robbie's birthday. Mm -hmm. We must have had maybe 60, 70 kids in this like tiny, tiny, tiny room. They were like outside. It was insane. And then, of course, I had a headlining show in the main room, and I got to bring in nine people. <laughs> oh, yeah. Great show. So before COVID, you guys were almost going to do, like, a tour in Romania, or was it uh, Austria? Austria, yes. Me? Wow. I was going to do it uh, with This is a train wreck. We were going to go to Austria off of the back of this uh, festival called Saban Fest. Nice. And we got on their couch edition, um, which is like, you know, they're, they're, they're COVID thing because they do it every year, but they were doing that just, you know, to still give a show for people. 
Mm-hmm. And we got on the lineup with some pretty big people. We got on with somebody from Me First and the Gimme Gimmies and like I think somebody from Bad Religion and mm-hmm. it was just a really great show. We we put our heart into it and they saw it and they loved it. So they want to try to bring us to Austria for the real thing. Oh, that is awesome, man. I, good luck with that. Hopefully this will all be over soon so you can make it over there for sure. Hopefully. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So you're a guitar player. You, um, name some like influential guitar players that influence your song, sound. Your sound, like. I really like. Um, this is gonna be weird, but I like Beck. Oh, the okay. Way, the way in a lot of his early a, music. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Guitar. He's a great uh, songwriter. But go ahead. Go ahead. He is. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the way that he completely destroys the sound of a guitar, not the guitar itself, but the sound of a guitar. He just obliterates it with either distortion or he detunes it or he does something. Mm -hmm. Like, I've never heard anybody do that before. That was super influential when I was uh, coming up in the music scene. That Sonic Youth and, um, oh, geez, uh, the Dead Kennedys. Oh, okay. Yeah, it influenced so. me greatly as far as guitar goes. Yeah, Sonic Youth, they do kind of that wall of sound absurd in their sets, right? Kind of reminiscent yes. to the My Bloody Valentine. Oh, that's another one, dude. Epic yeah. is great. Those guys are legendary. Yeah, dude. Um, they were here, man, like years ago on the FYF Festival, uh, My Bloody Valentine. And it was, I, I didn't go that year, but that I, I heard canceled. it was a great show. Yeah, yeah, I know one. Yeah, yeah, they're not doing that festival anymore. But I'm talking. No, about no, no. That, yeah. that, yeah, that that year that they were gonna play uh, in 2018, they mm-hmm. canceled the festival, but they still played. Like oh. they ended up getting a show at the Shrine, and I saw it, and it was so good, wow. dude. It was the it's the loudest thing I've ever heard. It shook you like it it in your guts. Like it was just like, oh my God. And they did this thing at the end of the show where at the last song, I think you made me realize they just played as long and as hard as they for like 10 minutes. Yeah. And it was just like, what is it like, dude? It was oh to be back there. Yeah, <laughs> that's absolutely insane. Yeah, I, I like that band for sure, definitely. So, are you doing a lot of practicing during COVID? Are you feeling more creative, or are you just kind of like going in and out with both bands, or what's happening now with your creative process during quarantine? With everything going on, um, I've been trying personally to just stay focused on not being stagnant. I guess is the way to say it because mm-hmm. I'm always doing stuff with music. I'm doing either like trying to do session work for some rappers that I know, trying to do some vocal work for this dude in Germany that I know, mm-hmm. trying to write new stuff for no surprises, write new stuff for train wreck, practice those songs with no surprises and train wreck. Um, actually this whole quarantine, I've been recording my debut album called the 51st state. And uh, oh, wow. I've been working on this for about uh, five years intermittently, but I've been really focusing on it for the last two years, and it's it's gonna be a doozy. I think I sent you one of the tracks from it. It's 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 gonna be a big one. I'll tell you that. So are you playing all the instruments on the album, or you're gonna have some people help you out a little bit? There's gonna be a few friends that are helping me out. I got a dude who plays violin. His name is Seth Hansen. If you oh. need a violin. Anybody out there, check him out. He's also in a band called Kid Carrion, which mm-hmm. is one of my favorite groups. Honest to God, they're amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a it's a punk group with a violin player. I mean, <laughs> wow. Yeah, but, that is um, insane. He's helping me out. I got um, this guy on YouTube who does a lot of horror videos called Nightmind. He helped me out with some narration. Oh, yeah. Cool. And... Uh, just a bunch of just uh, any friend that I have that plays music I was like please can you put something on this because mm-hmm. I figured man with how uncertain the last year was you don't know what the hell is going to happen so if this no. is going to be the only damn thing I ever put out which you know like I hope it won't be but like you know if it is 
Mm-hmm. I want this to be the strongest product I could possibly make. And I think I've done that. Yeah, man. I mean, I feel the same way you do. I'm so passionate about music. Um, that's the reason why I started doing these episodes with my musician friends. And luckily, I'm meeting people like you um, to have these music conversations with. Because at the end of the day, when we're not here, these conversations will still be left here. You know, your music will be here forever. Somebody in Frankfurt, Germany might come across one of your records. You never know, you know what I mean? So yeah, dude. It, it's always good to have, you know, something, you know, reminiscent of what you loved, you know, if, we, if something happens to us, which I hope not, but hey, we don't know at this point. So yeah, yeah um, exactly. You know what I mean? You gotta leave the passionate things here for sure. Um, so um, burning down the cross and the Johnny, um, Anarchy film, um, the song on the soundtrack. Uh, tell me a little bit about that and, uh, oh, and how shit. you guys, you know, made it on the soundtrack. Or and uh, I'm, I'm interested in seeing the movie too. I haven't seen that movie. Yeah, I can send you a link to the to the to the director's page. But uh, mm-hmm. I, um, my brother Blake, he's in the film industry and the podcast industry. Actually, oh, shout okay. out to him with a spiritual successor anywhere you can find podcasts Mm -hmm. um he uh went to film went to columbia college film school and Mm -hmm. made a bunch of friends there including um the guy who made that movie his name is james abrams now that guy um heard some of my no surprises music went to a few shows absolutely Mm -hmm. loved what we were doing and asked me to not only contribute to the soundtrack, but act in the film. I play Jerry, who is the lead singer of Buck People. Uh, I actually have the jacket somewhere in here from the movie, but uh, I play the, the lead character that dies. Oh, so and, you're, uh, you're in that movie? Yes. Oh, that is awesome. I am the second lead, and it's pretty fun. I get to die. <laughs> It was cool. I had like fake glass all over my face and blood and I made the director cry in a good way. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was fun, man. But he came up to me and he was like, dude, I really like your stuff. You sound like Jeff Rosenstock and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, bro, that's huge. Uh, What do you want to do? We wrote the song in one day and then the next day recorded it and then the next day mixed it and it was done like that in like pure punk fashion man he got it done and the movie's fantastic i think the song actually won uh like a seattle film festival award of some kind oh that is nice so yeah i wrote it with him and i'm very proud of it uh so did you did you audition for that role or is it just kind of like a thing where your your brother was involved and he recommended you or he the the director james had met me before and he had written the part but he immediately after meeting me said like yo no this is perfect for you like you should do this you should do this but i insisted to audition so yes i did audition but i got the part so that's That's what cool yeah it's cool that you got that in your arsenal you know as far as creativity and stuff so i'll definitely check out um the movie yeah. So um, I've been doing this thing kind of like called top four. Um, so a top four like punk rock bands that influenced you or that you that you love over the years. OK. Uh, Asian Orange, Dead Kennedys. Um, there's this group, this really underground group called Canned Travolta. They did mm-hmm. one single and with the with the somebody from the village people and it's fantastic it's called time to change check it out it's amazing and um oh god i'm blanking on the last one um i guess the descendants i can't remember the last one right now Mm -hmm. but the descendants no 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 wait wait fear that's what it is fear Fear. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they're legends for sure so I don't think you're like a thrash metal, death metal fan. What what about metal bands like thrash metal or death metal? Top metal bands I'm not as familiar with. It's mm-hmm. it's something that I've just recently got into. Oh, okay. Um, so I I don't know enough off the top of my head to give you four. Oh, okay. I got you. But so. I will say that I uh I prefer Anthrax over Metallica, if that makes sense. Hey, you know what? Well, you know it's like. 
I love Anthrax. Like I've been listening to them since like Among the you know Among the Living and since the late '80s, early '90s. And I love Metallica too. Early Metallica. But, early Metallica is uh, fantastic. Like, you know. That. Yeah, for sure. But uh, definitely Anthrax. You know, definitely a stable. Scott Ian. You know, Mod into side projects, Sod, all that stuff. Um, so what do you think is like the key to keeping a band together, especially especially in times like these and difficult times? Or it doesn't even have to be times like these. What do you think is the key of like um, keeping that interest there and not breaking up ultimately? Two things. Mm -hmm. Like any relationship, which a band is, it's a, re it's a musical relationship between either at least one other person and yourself. Mm -hmm. What what that relation what any relationship requires is communication like you need to tell that person yo do you feel heard in the group like nobody mm. wants to just be like you know okay play that same thing over and over because it and you don't even have an input on it you know what i mean mm -hmm. like it's all about the communication like yo what do you think about this i don't know i could probably jazz it up a little bit more okay let's fucking hear that and then the second thing is being open to new ideas like jamming and shit right every with no surprises every single time we meet it doesn't matter if we have a show the next day or we need to practice a specific song that we're going to record the next day we always jam first thing we do is like all right what you got let's do this weird primus thing that i came up with the other day which mm. turns into a song and then it's like yeah let's re like record that so that becomes a new song that we have in the arsenal and then we work on what we need to work on it's it's just all about it's just like when you have music in general that you're listening to, you need to listen. You need to listen to the other person and be like, yo, what do you feel? It's not just you in that in that band, you know what I mean? I yeah. guess that's the key to keeping shit together. Yeah. Um, it's weird as you mentioned Promise, because I was just about to ask you to ask you what covers you guys like to play. I saw a video of you guys doing a Morrissey cover. Um, so have you done like all cover sets or do you have certain covers that you guys like to implement in your set? We actually have a whole medley of covers that we do at the end of our sets, traditionally, if time allows. Mm. Uh, it's called Wednesday Burial, and it's every, it's like six um, surf rock songs, all just in a row, because they're all in the key of E. They're all the same like root chords and shit, so it's really easy to just glide through them all. It's... Um, Miserloo, Walk Don't Run, Pipeline, and Espionage by Green Day. Um, and then usually we, we end it with a different cover. Uh, like, it's a different cover every show. Mm -hmm. But the one that I loved the most was Tear It Up by The Cramps. Wow, oh, cool. Because yeah. I just got to fucking just go insane. And uh, we've also done, like, Helter Skelter. I think we did Walk the Line one time, or Folsom Prison one time. Like, it, it just all depends on what the, like, what the mood of that set is but mm -hmm. we also do a cover of captain beefheart's zigzag wanderer um we used to do a cover of the talking heads psycho killer mm -hmm. and um at the whiskey we did a crazy ass punk cover of push it by salt and pepper <laughs> so we it, it's really a mixed bag it just depends on what we feel like that day but yeah we have done full cover sets that show i mentioned a while back from my buddy Robbie's birthday, uh, we did a, just a full cover set of his favorite songs, like Neutral Milk Hotel. Um, we did This Is The Day by The The. We did like a whole bunch of shit just for him and he cried and it was great. Yeah, you do a good job um, singing Morrissey songs, you know, good, good hey, vocal for sure, dude. Yeah. And The we, Cramp. We, the oh, funny thing is we never actually did that Morrissey song live. Oh, so that was just practice. Okay. We were going to, mm -hmm. but um, I think the drummer got sick or something. I don't remember, but like we were all ready to do it. And then for whatever reason, we couldn't do it. But that song is still in my back pocket. Like our guitarist still knows that song. So we might do it in the future. Who knows? Yeah, who knows, right? Yeah. Yeah, man. So I appreciate your time um, and, you know, um, talking to, to me and stuff and definitely keep in touch and we'll. You know, maybe I can uh, talk to some other local bands, you know, down in San yeah, Fernando. Man. And um, this was definitely very cool. I appreciate it, man. And um, 
I, I, you know, the way we met was cool. You definitely stuck to what you said you were going to do, came back from vacation. And, you know, I, that is awesome, man. And, um, Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Yeah. So I'll definitely be hitting you up, man. And you, you have a good one. Good luck to your band and, and future endeavors. Yeah, yeah, man. Everybody listening, uh, if you can, check out the new album, The 51st State, coming out in May. Keep definitely. a lookout for that. Definitely. And also, Keep a lookout on Where is Colorado. I'm not going to say anything more about that because it's a secret. But yeah, check it out. It's a concept album about the future. Check it out. Cool, man. You have a good evening. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Bye.